Well, we're going to talk a bit more about this now with France 24's Doug Herbert. Doug, no confirmation yet on who concretely is behind uh, these attacks, but what's clear is that it was a massive security failure. Absolutely, and there's uh, quite a bit of uh, signs of outrage uh, within Iran itself at what is perceived as, yeah, a security failure because this is the worst single most deadly incident uh, since the Iranian Revolution, really, you go back to 1979, uh, and that it is seen as a failure of both uh, Iran's government security services and, and intelligence ser uh, services, but also the services of the powerful Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, the IRGC, of which uh, the, the man whose uh, tomb uh, grave these these pilgrims were all visiting, uh, Soleimani was was the head when uh, before he was killed four years ago in, in a drone strike uh, launched, ordered by Donald Trump. Uh, look, right now what we're, we're, we're seeing is a lot of finger pointing, as you said, and a lot of government figures are lashing out directly at the default enemies who are always going to be Israel and the United States. It works politically, it works ideolog ideologically, and in the absence of any concrete evidence, it's, uh, it's an easy go-to uh, ac uh, accusation. Uh, the problem with the accusation uh, is that there's really very little evidence to suggest to point directly to Israel. It isn't obviously, uh, it's easy to blame Israel in these cases. In these cases, Israel has uh, in the past targeted, had targeted assassinations of Iranian, uh, both military uh, figures, scientific figures, nuclear scientists. And that is one of the reasons why uh, both U.S. intelligence experts, other Western intelligence experts looking at this say that this attack, uh, a mass terrorist attack killing civilians, you know, the numbers were over 100 yesterday. They've been sort of uh, revised downwards a little bit since then by, by government officials, but it's still massive killings of a terrorist, very blunt, brutal bombing attacks are not the typical calling cards, uh, as you will, of, of, of the Israeli, of Mossad and Israeli uh, security forces. Uh, this is why they say more likely, and obviously it's speculation, Jeannie, because like we say, no one's claiming responsibility yet. Uh, so far, maybe never will. Uh, the Islamic State group in the past has staged these types of attacks. Uh, recently, last year, August 2023, at Shiraz, at, a, at, a, at an Iranian mosque. Uh, before that, in the uh, in the autumn of 2022, there was a similar attack against Iranian mosques. Um, unlike this time, there have often been uh, rapid claims of responsibility by ISIS. So we haven't had any claims yet, which doesn't mean it isn't ISIS or some other perhaps uh, minority or ethnic group that is opposed to the regime, because let's not forget this was very much uh, – the target was very much embodied, the ideals of the Shiite majority regime and its clerics, its theocrats. Um, so anyone launching this type of attack is clearly trying to send – some sort of message, and perhaps also take advantage of what is an extremely febrile moment right now, not just in the Middle East, but Iran as well, because Iran's seen as, even though it will deny it a lot of the time, as the proxies for a lot of these militia across the regions, whether Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah in Lebanon, or its own militias in, in Syria and Iraq. So this attack happened at a commemoration ceremony for this slain general, Suleimani, yeah. who was a very symbolic figure in Iran. Give us a sense of who he was and his importance. Yeah, you don't get more revered and more symbolic. He was literally referred to as a living martyr, even while he was while he was alive, you know, he, before he was killed. Um, he was the man who was seen as the architect, is what has become now sort of the, the trademark, the signature uh, foreign policy of Iran, which is to project its influence across the Middle East through this sort of access of allied uh, proxy militias, if you will, militias that we've talked about a lot in recent, recent weeks and months, militias based in Syria and Iraq, uh, militias obviously Hezbollah, the very um, powerful armed force based in southern Lebanon, more powerful than the government there, and obviously Hamas itself. Now, while Iran has vehemently, and, and let's not forget the Houthis in Yemen, who have been launching those attacks against the Red Sea uh, shipping. Now, obviously, Iran will continually deny that there are any direct links of support between it and these groups, but the vast, overwhelming majority of evidence does point to Iraqi support, logistical, intelligence, arming, financing, you name it. Um, and the, the problem here is Soleimani embodied all of that because where this happened, Kerman, his native city, where his uh, tomb is located, it was also sort of, in a sense, a focal point, a crucible of the regime itself and all of the values of the regime. So by striking here, whoever is behind these attacks was clearly trying to send some message, whether they simply want to destabilize the government in power in Tehran uh, and show that, you know, the, those security failures we were talking about before make them look vulnerable, or whether somehow they were also, it was, you know, 
Israel or an outside force attacking uh, Iran directly, uh, they couldn't have chosen perhaps a more appropriate, in, in a grim sense, target. It was both the head, the al Quds head, Soleimani, was based there. It was the crucible of recruitment for al Quds and the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, and it was a place seen as an ideological, if you will, and political rampart for the theocratic regime based in the capital, Tehran. Doug, thanks for that. Rest 24 is Doug Herbert.